Welcome back to New Rockstars, I'm Eric Voss, and this is a breakdown of the first three episodes of The Boys spinoff, Gen V. This takes place between seasons three and the upcoming season four of The Boys on Amazon Prime Video. It's set in the same universe, and this show is so good. It's packed with Easter eggs, fun details, and lots of blood. And yeah, we're gonna break down the biggest stuff that you might have missed from these first three episodes. And if you're not as familiar with what the show is, we did do a primer video with everything you need to know going into this series, including the tie-ins to The Boys, and really everything you need to know about the boys be sure to check that out if you haven't seen it already but let's talk about these first three episodes of gen v and this video is sponsored by squarespace the all-in-one platform that makes launching your own website a breeze episode one god you this title is an affectionate abbreviated nickname for Godolkin university the college for superheroes where most of the series takes place the name of the university actually comes from the boys comic storyline that was also pretty messed up to say the least this series draws inspiration from it but it's mostly its own creation we open on a vsn news clip that's vo Sports Network about A Train joining the Seven. This is about eight years prior to where we are now, and Madeline Stillwell, Elizabeth Shue, hasn't had her brain melted by Homelander yet. A Train is the first black member of the Seven, which is why this family is watching. Which proves what we have been saying for a long time. We live in a post racism world. Ugh. Stillwell and Vaught never miss an opportunity to pat themselves on the back like this in just hilariously gross and misguided ways. We get a shot of Vaught Tower before it was destroyed by Soldier Boy in season three of The Boys. There's also a shot of the current lineup of the seven from left to right. It's Lamplighter, The Deep, Queen Maeve, Homelander, Black Noir, A-Train, and Translucent. A lot of them have since died in some gruesome ways. The news ticker on the bottom reads, want to bootstrap themselves out of poverty. So Vaught News Network is pretty right wing and everything it reports on benefits it's the Vought Corporation in some way. The ticker continues with a quote from Professor Richard Brink Brinkerhoff. He's the crime fighting department chair at Godolkin University, played by Clancy Brown. The quote reads, Brinkerhoff, a train came to me so naturally gifted, but growing up without a father figure, he'll be the first to tell you I filled that void for him, kept him out of trouble, healthy diet, clean living, got him to hone his something, which clean living, uh, ironic considering a train will get addicted to compound B. We cut to the living room of the Moreau's, a black family watching this news broadcast, the Dad is so excited to see the first black man inducted into the Seven, but his preteen daughters, Marie and Annabeth, are just too busy with their phones to care. They're recreating the 2015 photo from Kendall Jenner's Instagram, which at the time was the most liked photo in Instagram history. The mom is similarly unimpressed with A-Train. He goes clubbing with Jake Paul and Scott Disick. I will take whatever I can get. <laughs> Jake Paul, a YouTuber turned boxer who's had a share of controversies. Please don't fight me, Jake. And Scotty, you know, the socialite who has had three kids with Kourtney Kardashian and is mostly known for being rich. A train partying with these guys is a fun contrast to the narrative Vaught is pushing that he's a down to earth poor kid from the streets. Marie, the older of the two daughters, gets cramps from her first period, and there's a big painting of flowers on the wall right next to her, a metaphor you could say for her flowering to a woman, but it's not a pretty picture. On the TV, we hear, I'll always protect you. You're a little hero. This is actually from the Cuddle Buddies commercial that we saw in The Boys, featuring the junior Homelander Cuddle Buddy doll that was later used to smuggle fentanyl. Marie gets her period, and unfortunately, that's when her powers manifest. She has the ability to manipulate blood, but she has no clue what is happening here and ends up accidentally killing both her parents, RIP. And the idea of superpowers dawning at the moment of someone's puberty is really just something that goes all the way back to X-Men comics, specifically the 2000 X-Men movies, where the pubescent rogue has her powers awaken in just the worst possible moment, the worst possible way. Okay, cut to present day. Marie, now played by Jazz Sinclair, jolts awake in bed as if she was dreaming about everything we just saw. Megan, the stallion's anxiety plays, and Marie is waiting to hear if she got into Godolkin University, so her day is filled with anxiety. One teen in her shared room floats above a bed as they sleep. Marie has posters of Queen Maeve and Golden Boy on her wall, along with a motivational brinker off calendar with today's date circled in blood red and 4 p.m. written on it. We also see a sign for the Red River Institute, under video surveillance 24 hours a day. Marie was sent here after her parents' death. It's like a juvenile facility for the soups. We actually saw a photo of Marie Moreau as being at the Red River facility in season three of The Boys. Then at group therapy, this guy says, Ever since Starlight left the seven, I've just been inspired to speak my own truth. At the end of season three of The Boys, Starlight burned her superhero outfit and officially joined up with Huey and Butcher and the rest of the vigilantes. Marie reads The Hero Inside of All of Us, one of Brinkerhoff's books. It's heavily highlighted and marked up 
So this guy is clearly someone she looks up to. She cuts her palms with a switchblade to practice her blood powers, and we see previous scars, indicating that she's done this a lot. I think one of the most fascinating things about the show is the way that it uses things like bulimia and cutting as kind of like a dark way to one's superpowers. Here we see her leaving a literal river of red around the Red River Institute insignia on the floor that also has the year the Institute was established, 1965. We later learn this is the same year Godolkin was founded. Uh-huh. At the end of the training session, Marie has to sit down because, yeah, losing that much blood has got to make you woozy. She sees a fellow student get carted off by armed guards to the Elmira Adult Rehabilitation Center by Global Wellness Services, a Vought company, of course. This is another institution owned by Vought where soups that turn 18 and don't get adopted are sent. We hear from Marie's school counselor that this facility is much worse than Red River. Now, the counselor is Vanessa, who we saw in season three of The Boys when Huey was investigating Victoria Newman's upbringing at Red River. Global Wellness Services is a shell company that provides therapy services for soups. The red-handed kid at the library is watching Homebanger, Red, White, and Anal, a Homelander spoof porn that originally appeared in season two of The Boys. Marie gets accepted into Godolkin and tells her counselor that she's going to be the first black woman of the seven. We get this hilarious God View orientation video. Eric Kripke regular Alexander Calvert, who played Jack on Supernatural, plays Rufus, one of the students giving a testimonial. Kripke created The Boys and serves as an executive producer on Gen V. The dean of students is Indira Shetty. She explains that there are two tracks for God You students, the Crimson Countess School for the Performing Arts or the Lamplighter School for Crime Fighting. There's this statue of Lamplighter and I love how the camera pans just enough so that the sun glare makes it look like he's holding a ball of fire because his power was fire manipulation. Indira stands in front of the stained glass window which shows Homelander, Queen Maeve, Lamplighter, A-Train, Crimson Countess. In the top row is kind of hard to see but it looks like maybe Starlight, Polarity, whom we'll meet later, and Translucent or possibly Black Noir. The mural on the ceiling is similar to one in Vought Tower, but with a new blue sky around the edges, and Lamplighter is back after being removed from the Vought mural to make room for Starlight. And Kripke confirmed that Starlight is actually gone from the Vought Tower version in The Boys Season 4. We learn that Queen Maeve and A-Train both attended God U and were ranked number one, and The Deep was ranked number six, which is just hilarious. He's such a doofus. Being in the top ten is a big deal, and it basically guarantees you great endorsements, entry into the seven, or some other huge perk, so it's highly competitive. The current top three are shown. Luke Reardon, number one, Jordan Lee, number two, and Andre Anderson, number three. Another mural in the student commons shows Queen Maeve, someone in green who I think we haven't seen yet, A-Train, Black Noir, Crimson Countess, Polarity, Lamplighter, Translucent, The Deep, Starlight, and Homelander. As Maria arrives at school, we hear the Donna's cover version of Billy Idol's Dancing With Myself. There are soup statues lining the campus, but one appears to be missing. It seems most likely that this is Soldier Boy, since he was disgraced at the end of season three for attacking the other soups and destroying Bot Tower. Marie walks through the machine that looks like a metal detector, but you know, it would be kind of silly to have at a school for superheroes, so I think we'll find out later that this serves some other purpose. The RA is Maverick, the invisible guy that we saw in the orientation video, and he's telling the students about a mandatory consent seminar. One student asks if his penis is out, and he says yes, because as established by Translucent, soups with that power can just make themselves invisible, but not their clothes, so they usually just go naked. Fought News Network Breaking News report says that jury selection begins today for the trial of Homelander. So at the end of season three of The Boys, he killed a protest on live TV. VNN is spinning it with the headline reading, New Evidence Russia Plotted Seven Tower Attack. Homelander lawyer, he stood his ground. Make of that what you will. A social media poll from Lil Miss activists asking for honest thoughts on Vought continuing after Maeve's apparent death has these options. It honors her legacy. Don't care. She's dead. What does she care? Let's pressure them to remove her products. I bought a second freezer to hoard the lasagna. The background for the poll is a box of Brave Maeve's Vegetarian Pride lasagna with Maeve on the cover next to a rainbow. Then there's an autographed Maeve Funko Pop selling on VBay, the Vought version of eBay, for $1,900. We meet Marie's roommate, Emma Meyer, aka Little Cricket, and her gerbil, David Caruso. Emma can make herself small, and in her room, there's a little wardrobe with all her little clothes. Marie asks, Who's David Caruso? You didn't see Jade? Just hilarious that the 1995 film is Emma's go-to Caruso example, and not CSI Miami. But you know, that's a joke, and it's a good one. Emma has a mini cutout of Starlight in her redesigned superhero costume from when Vought wanted to make her sexier. The roommates go watch Luke Reardon, aka Golden Boy, at his training session. He's played by Patrick Schwarzenegger, and yes, that's Arnold's kid. Also the kid of Maria Shriver, so he's like technically a Kennedy, and on this show seems to be affected by a kind of meta-Kennedy curse. He has human torch-like powers and can engulf himself in thermal energy, setting himself ablaze. His girlfriend is Kate Dunlap, a mind empath who can push thoughts onto people to make them go do stuff, kind of like Kilgrave from the Marvel Universe. 
Andre Anderson is his best friend and he can manipulate metal like Magneto can. Marie meets Jordan Lee, played by two different actors, who has the ability to switch genders. It seems like each version of Jordan has a different ability because when Brink shoots them, they switch from male to female. So the male, at least, is invulnerable, but we'll talk more about their powers as we go. Brink tells Golden Boy that he's been accepted into the Seven, who are likely looking for someone to replace Homelander as the all-American and vulnerable face of the group. Homelander's statue, you notice, has graffiti on it that says Rock, which could just be some soup's signature tag. We'll later see some maintenance guys cleaning this off. Emma reads through the comments in her latest episode of her YouTube show, Fun Size with Little Cricket. And folks, this is why you never read the comments. Uh, except, except you in the comments of this video. I'll read your comments because I love you all. But in general, it's a hellscape that we YouTubers try to avoid at all costs. And yeah, there is a scene where Emma shrinks down to help a guy get over his um uh, complex, one might say. It's an insane scene, but you know, at least not as graphic as what Termite did to that guy using um, uh, similar abilities. At the bar, Andre uses his powers to impress a woman he's hitting on and he turns a coin into a little metal humming bird. He gets bumped by someone who loses control of the bird, which slices through a woman's neck. Marie saves her life by forcing the blood back into her body, mid-spurt, and closing up the wound. And on a show as bloody as The Boys is, folks, this is a pretty big game changer. This whole ordeal is caught on people's camera phones and Marie becomes a minor celebrity. She's rewarded for it by getting kicked out of school by Brink. He wants her to take the fall for Andre and the others. This mirrors Starlight's journey on the Seven, when she was also caught on camera saving a woman and almost got fired for this. We see this extra in a green sweater with white streaks in her hair, and she kind of looks like Rogue from X-Men, which knowing the boys in Eric Kripke is probably intentional. Marie storms down the hall to Brink's office and she's wearing a maroon leather trench coat that was designed as an homage to Butcher's trench coat. After Marie catches Luke murdering Brink, he goes after her, but Jordan steps in and we get a good old fashioned soup fight and a better look at Jordan's powers. As Luke flames on, Jordan switches to the male persona to avoid the damage. Then they switch to the female persona to throw a punch that it looks like they're using some kind of energy shield to pack an extra wallop. Then they actually materialize another energy blast to throw at Luke. Outside, Jeff, God Used social media director, tries to get Andre to do an ad for Turbo Rush. Remember, that's A-Train's energy drink. After Luke runs outside, he whispers something to Andre and then flies up high in the air to make himself so fiery that he blows up from the inside. Similarly, in The Boys, Lamplighter, who could control fire but couldn't make it himself, he had to rely on outside sources, committed suicide by setting himself ablaze inside Bot Tower. So at the end of episode one, we get a special message from a familiar face, Ashley Barrett, who was appointed CEO of VOD after Stan Edgar got the boot. She calls Golden Boy's death an isolated incident. Of course she does. And we get the coming attractions for the season. But since we already know what's coming, let's dive into episode two. If you're looking for a more professional way to showcase what you do online, then links to your social media pages, it might be time to get yourself a website. And that means it's time to check out Squarespace. Squarespace is an all-in-one platform that provides you with everything you need to do whatever you need with your website. Squarespace has templates and designs for pretty much everything. So even even if you're making your very first website, using Squarespace makes it super easy to customize your look, update content, and add features to fit your unique needs. For instance, Squarespace makes it easy to sell merch. You can design your products and then save time and money by letting Squarespace handle production, inventory, and shipping. And if you're selling any other kind of physical goods, digital goods, or even a service, Squarespace makes it easy to build your storefront and grow your business. To check it out for yourself, head to squarespace.com for a free trial. And when you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com slash new rockstars to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or a domain. Episode two, it starts out with Phoebe Bridger's cover of Metallica's Nothing Else Matters as Luke's remains are cleaned up on campus. A sign for a cartoon black noir reads, no looky lose this area patrolled by security. Cartoon black noir, have we learned nothing from boys season three? That's where the darkest things happen to black noir. Despite this, there is a lot of looky lose though with everyone's got their camera phones out. The scooping up of blown up viscera is reminiscent of episode three of the boys, which starts with Butcher and Frenchie shoveling translucent blown up remains into similar buckets. Ashley works from Bot Tower, which is undergoing renovations. She yells at Dean Shetty and Polarity, who is Andre's dad, played by Sean Patrick Thomas from Save the Last Dance. About this Golden Boy incident, Shetty says, Ward hired me because I'm a problem solver. When 400 kids learned they weren't gifts from God, but their parents drugged them with compound V as infants, I barely had any suicides, did I? In The Boys, everyone initially thought soups were born randomly, with Vought and others pushing the narrative that they were chosen by God. But then it was discovered that they were all actually given compound V as babies, usually with their parents' consent. Emma wears a Nirvana sweatshirt. In between this and David Caruso, kind of seems like she's big in the 90s, even though she was definitely born after the 90s, if we're assuming present day. That's okay. I was a 90s kid. I was obsessed with the 80s. Now, the jacket Jordan is 
Wearian has a Koma Inu, or Dog Lion, and a Falcon on the front, and a map of Japan on the back. Rufus here is looking very MAGA in that red cap. Yeah, it says keep America safe, and he's talking crap about Kate, so she uses her powers to make him hit himself in the nuts with a baseball bat while yelling Jumanji. We actually get to see this later in the episode. Jumanji! This moment is kind of like when Silver Fox forced Striker to walk until his feet bled in X-Men Origins, Wolverine. Her power very similar to Kate, and Kate's eye has a burst blood vessel in it, so clearly this ability takes a toll. It kind of reminds me of the weird eyes of Jason Stryker in X2, X-Men United, who as kind of a mastermind type figure has the ability to manipulate people's free will like this. Clearly a lot of inspirations along with Kilgrave are worked in here. Now we see the new rankings. Andre's number one, Daddy's thrilled, Marie has jumped to number eight, the first freshman to crack the top eight, and Jordan has been bumped to number five, since it seems only Brink was willing to overlook the fact that their powers don't play well into the VOD demo. Actually, later Jordan mentions Jacksonville, Florida, which is my hometown, and I would have thought Jacksonville has come a long way since getting a lot of airtime on The Good Place. But you know, Jacksonville's Jacksonville. I love it. Home place of Leonard Skinner. Shout out to the 904. Duval! Anyway, so social media director Jeff hooks Marie up with a number of Vought Tech products. This is for you. For me. When you get back to your room, you will find a V-pad, V-pod, V-pods, and Vodify speakers, and a V-braider personal massager. Which yeah, is the show obviously poking fun at Apple's branding. Jackie Tone is back as Courtney, Vought's unscripted producer from season one of The Boys, now EP in charge of Marie's interview with Haley Miller, another character returning from The Boys. Polarity shows Courtney a picture of himself when he was his son's age in his superhero uniform to prove that Andre is a chip off the old block, but it makes sense why in episode one, Andre said he didn't want to be top ranked at the school. He's a lot of pressure from his dad. It's interesting how all the soups on the show have powers that are tied to YA issues that teens struggle with. Like Marie has to cut herself to use her powers, Emma has to throw up to make herself small, Jordan's powers deal with issues around gender identity, Kate tells people what to do despite the fact that it harms her, kind of like modern influencers, and Andre has superpowers like his dad and has to deal with superpowered parental expectations. Polarity says that after Andre's mother died, he wanted to crawl into a bottle of Macalon. Macalon 25 was the whiskey Sitwell offered Senator Calhoun when she was trying to win his vote to put soups in the military in season one of The Boys. Vought is pushing the narrative that Marie and Andre had fought and stopped Golden Boy. You guys are heroes. So currently we're testing the Guardians of Godolkin. Even when I'm saying it now, it feels like it's too many syllables. So we'll Obviously a reference to Guardians of the Galaxy, which has one more syllable. We get another Boys cameo, this time from PJ Byrne, playing Adam Bork, director of the Vought Studios film, Dawn at the Seven. He's a guest professor for one of the acting classes at Godolkin and still very full of himself. We learn that he has to take the job from being in director jail after exposing himself to Minka Kelly, which is just kind of interesting for the show to do because they also shout out Brian Singer. Ooh, I'm so glad they made that joke. Also, we see how his whiteboard is filled with pretentious quotes from Aristotle, Nietzsche, Oscar Wilde, Plato, Pluto, Thomas Aquinas, Napoleon, and Shakespeare's quote, all the world's a stage, which yes, totally reflects the way Vought uses superheroes to push these false narratives. We never really know when something's a theatrical performance or real life. Dean Shetty tells the school of crime fighting students that she'll be taking over Professor Brink's classes, and she stands in front of various TV screens with a bunch of different information on them. One is an image of a human skull, another with a brand marketing style words on it, like stable, forecast, visionary, and time frame. There's a series of news clips as the TV switches through some channels, a presidential campaign video for Robert Singer and his vice presidential running mate, Victoria Newman, both of them from The Boys, an update about Homelander's trial, and then a Vought News Network bit about Luke's parents painting them in a negative light. They're being focused on the way the parents of mass shooters are sometimes put in the media spotlight. Emma and Justine smoke weed out of a queen made bong while debating what scene to do for their acting class. They look through a Netflix style queue of Vought movies, Dawn of the Seven, Big Crazy Love, Big Crazy Love 2, a poster that Emma also has on her wall. And we see the description of this one along the side there stating, Termite is at it again. Termite is another soup with Shrinky Powers who, you know, had a pretty unfortunate mishap on The Boys involving a guy's penis who met his own unfortunate end from Homelander in season three of The Boys. There's also Big Heart, Pocket Romance, Little Hero, a Queen Maeve solo film, Nubian Prince, that was the soup Sitwell was going to send to protect Baltimore in The Boys, Smallest Heart, Terminal Beauty, that one starring Popclaw that was A-Train's girlfriend whom he killed with a heroin overdose in season one, and Rising Tide, which is the deep solo movie. Justine says, Those are all Termites movies. Oh, f that guy. I went to these huge parties he'd throw with Brian Singer in the Hollywood Hills. <laughs> It was gross. Yeah, I dig it. The X-Men director who's had a number of allegations against him. And if you watched a deep dive investigation I did about why we still haven't seen X-Men in the MCU, I really just think it's because that guy is still a legacy producer on any movie that has X-Men in the title. Luke's brother Sam is being held in a secret facility underneath the school called The Woods, and they seem to be doing medical experiments on him, one that looks like they're harvesting spinal fluid. This could be related to V24 or Temp V, the serum that was introduced in The Boys Season 3 that gives regular people superpowers for a limited time. It was highly toxic and unstable 
cool, but if Vought could perfect it, they could make billions. We'll see if this is related to that or if it's something else entirely. As Emma learns that Justine spilled her secret about her having to throw up to use her powers to get small, there is a banner hanging with a picture of Crimson Countess that reads, Welcome Freshman Supers, Memento Adere Semper, which is Latin for Remember to Always Dare. We find out that soups have a wider range of hearing than non-powered people do, so one of the ways they can be hurt is with these high-frequency devices that security uses on them. Kate overdoes it with her powers, and she has a seizure, and we end the episode with Venus from Bananarama playing over the credits. And then on to episode three, Think Brink. We opened three years ago on the Sage Grove Center Psychiatric Hospital. This is the Vought subsidiary hospital that experiments on soups that we saw in The Boys. Also in one of these rooms, there is a, you know, an X-rated cameo of a certain hero named Love Sausage who showed up at the Herogasm party in The Boys season three. Luke's brother Sam was a patient there and he just found out that his powers don't come naturally. His parents had the brothers dose with compound V when they were babies. So Emma, we see, has made herself as small as an ant and then rebegins by eating a brave Maeve pride bar. After Homelander outed Maeve as a lesbian on national TV, Vought really just capitalized on it in the gross way only huge corporations are capable of. Dean Chetty is laying it on thick with Marie to get her to warm up to her, making her smiley face chocolate chip pancakes and telling her she's proud of her. Chetty mentions she had a daughter, so I'm curious to see the backstory on that. I'm sure we'll get there. In the quad, there's a missing poster for someone named Ron Lehman. This is a janitor who had his throat slit in episode two. He's described as a dog lover, grill master, and gentle soul. When Jordan is in the female persona in their room, having sex, salt and pepper, what a man plays and then Jordan shifts into their male persona after their parents knock on the door and I just love that when the guy Jordan was with phases naked through the dorm room wall if you listen closely you can hear the shout from whoever lives next door Jordan's mom brings them Vought a burger, including Deep's calamari poppers. And considering Deep can talk to sea creatures, it's just one messed up endorsement. And you know he wasn't happy to do it, he just kind of had to do it, the way Homelander made him eat one of his friends recently. We learn the board is voting on new school rankings tomorrow, so everyone goes to the Brink fundraiser event to suck up to them. There's a silent auction with a bunch of merch, the Deep's memoir, Deeper, which we saw him struggling to write in season one of the boys, a complete set of Vitality beauty products, and a pair of signed A-Trainer sneakers based on A-Trainer durable famous footwear. Marie wears a red gown and these ruby earrings that look like drops of blood dripping down from her ears, setting up the bloody ears that we see at the end of this episode, you could say. We see all kinds of agents and lawyers approaching Marie, including one with this QR code that I scanned. And when I watched this, it took me to a tweet of Kate McKinnon holding a UFC QR code in a 2021 SNL sketch. I don't know, I think the code might just be permalinked online, but who knows by the time you're watching this breakdown, Amazon may have like updated it into something else. At Andre's request, Emma shrinks down and breaks into the woods and we see this orderly with a bandage on her left arm that looks like a burn and she opens the feeding door for a soup that immediately shoots fire so you know that's how she got it emma sneaks into sam's room on the food tray and he has a poster on the wall for payback that's a soup team led by soldier boy in the past and another poster of black noir sam traps emma under a plastic cup exactly like you do if you find a cricket in your house the deep gives a statement for the in memoriam video for brink brink didn't just hone my skills he sharpened my mind he turned me into the curious intelligent man. I am today. Deep pauses before the word intelligent, and Chase Crawford is just so good in this role. He plays him like a true idiot. There is this hilarious exchange between Sam and Emma where Sam wants her to prove that she's real and not just a figment of his imagination. What's the name of my all time favorite movie? Well, you're a white guy, so. Uh, Godfather, Star Wars, or Shawshank? Waterworld. Yeah, who knows when the last time was that Sam was actually allowed to see a movie? So maybe Waterworld was the last one or something. But between this and Emma's love for the movie Jade, these two are just made for each other. The guards discover that Emma is in the woods and they shock the hell out of Sam by electrifying the floor, which is kind of something we saw in Narcina 5 and Star Wars Andor. So Emma dives into this dude's ear and crawls through his brain, killing him in the gruesome fashion that fans of the boys have come to expect. Now, from a practical production standpoint, the ear that Emma crawls out of was built practically and stood about 15 feet tall and had 1,000 gallons of fake blood in it. And the boys in Gen V get a lot of well-earned credit for their amazing VFX work. But like any great VFX work, what makes it so good is the amount of effort they put into the practical special effects. And it's where we end episode three and it's just such an incredible image. Okay, yeah, we kind of condensed the first three episodes of the boys in this one breakdown, but let us know in the comments if you're excited about the show and if you want us to keep breaking it down, we're gonna try to keep up with episode by episode because 
is this show. Again, it's so good. Huge thanks to Gina Ippolito for writing this breakdown and for Brandon Barrick for all of his help with the research as well. Please subscribe to New Rockstars and The Deep Dive and The Break Room. And you can support this network by grabbing some merch at nerdriot.shop. You can follow me at EA Voss, follow New Rockstars, and subscribe to New Rockstars for more analysis of everything you love. Thanks for watching. Bye.